Hello and welcome to your web exclusive demo for Two Red Robins Buttercup Farm. And this is such a cute collection. We're gonna take a little stroll down to the farmyard. We've got lovely animals to share with you. We've of course got beautiful florals and lovely little scenery too. So for this demonstration, what I'm gonna be doing is making a stepper card, but with more of a freestanding aspect to it. So we're gonna be working with construction acetate. The scene and the sort of dimension of the card is gonna come from this little diagram set which is of course Buttercup Farm in its own right. You've got the wall, you've got the trees, you've got all the detailing in the background but this is going to be my focal piece for the card design which the whole piece is going to be aimed around and the story is going to be around it. So what I'd like to do first of is create that construction acetate base and to do that I'm going to measure how wide I need to trim the acetate down to once I've cut out the scene from my reflection artwork. So this measures just under six inches. I'm going to go ahead and trim my construction acetate down to just under six inches across, so it won't be seen behind the reflection artwork there. So I'm using the top of the trimmer to bump that construction acetate up against, and then gonna hold down all of the elements and trim that acetate down. Now it's really important that we trim the acetate first before we try and score it, because it's much, much easier to do it in this order rather than trying to score and then trim. Now we've got a length of acetate which is going to form our stepper base. We need to put some score lines into this and the easiest way to do so is using a scoreboard but with um, a pokey tool rather than the ball tool. So the first score line we're going to go in at, let's just double check, four inches across. So take the pokey tool into the little slot for four inches and we're using quite a shallow uh, depth of this just coming down, straight down the four inches. Now it might be that you need to do this a couple of times just to initiate that score into the acetate and to give you that score line. So four inches and what you'll feel is the acetate will begin to lift at the other side. That's when you've got the score into place. We're then going to keep the acetate in place and score again at eight inches. Again, continuing that idea of the stepper design. So coming in at eight inches and just scoring that down. So again, running that pokey tool at a nice shallow angle along the length of the acetate. From here, we're gonna have a few inches left. We are gonna trim it down as well to make sure that the end meets, but we're gonna take an inch and a half. So coming in at nine and a half inches and again, score that down as well. and that will give us our stepper design, of course, just trimming down that end. To fold, what I recommend with your construction acetate is fold from the center, give it a little squeeze, and then encourage that fold along the length of the acetate. You can go in with a bone folder as well, just to sharpen up and neaten up those edges. But once you've gone ahead and scored each one of those lines, and remember, trim down that front as well, you then get your stepper card design. Now, of course, because it's your construction acetate, it's gonna be clear, it's not gonna notice in the overall card design, but it means we can build a little world onto this stepper look. We're gonna take that original scene and that's gonna become the backdrop to our card design like so. So to stick our site scene onto our stepper, because we're working on a shiny surface, you wanna be working with a nice, strong adhesive tape. Something like your red liner tape is perfect for this. I'm gonna add the red liner tape to the background of the scene and just trim that down, just top and bottom to make sure that all sticks in place nicely. A little bit on the bottom there. Trim that down and then using a bone folder again just to burnish that tape down and into place. I'm then going to remove the carrier sheet from the tape itself just off the one side and slot our scene neatly into place. If you get it a little bit wonky we can always lift it at this stage before we've burnished it down just getting that central and sticking it down like so. Once it's in place, we can then remove the other side of the red liner tape as well, just so everything sits neatly and that whole piece is stuck to the reverse 
like so. So now we've got our stepper upright with our scene in place. But obviously we want to make something of this scene. We want to give it a lot of detailing. We want to give it that kind of depth and dimension. And this is where that scene builder die really comes into play because we've got options. We can cut out things like the little house. We can cut out things like the, the wall and the path and the mountains and the background. It's just, it's a really lovely way of crafting with this. So you've got different layers to build up that look and build up that feel of the design. We're gonna use different elements on different parts of the card. So we're gonna go in with the mountains and the tree and everything and just nestle that down into the background like so. We're not gonna stick anything just yet. We're gonna play about with the design until we're happy with how it looks. And I think now for the foreground, we'll come in with the piece of wall. So you kind of got this staggered effect with the whole overall design, just like so. We can further add to this. Let's go with another little wall, because I think it would be nice to nestle the house into the backdrop there, like so as well. So you're building up a whole design, you're building up depth and perspective on the card itself. To layer these, I'm gonna go ahead and use a foam tape just so you get a little bit of lift, but it's not gonna overwhelm the card itself. This is just a one mil foam tape. So it gives us just a little bit of lift without overtaking the whole dimension of the card. Trim it down with my scissors and just strategically placing it so we don't get any little saggy areas. It's all supported the whole way along the design. I'm gonna come in with the wall as well. Let's get our foam tape on that ready to go. Like so. Let's just trim that end down. We don't want anything hanging over the edge there. So we can trim that down just ever so slightly. And then same thing again with a little piece of wall, just like so. The house, we're gonna nestle into the design. So I think I'll stick that with glue. But let's go ahead and build our layers. So removing the carrier sheet off the foam tape there and just nestling this down into the background of the card, just making sure it's all lined up. Give you that just a little bit of drop shadow, just a little bit of lift on that. Same thing with the wall and the pathway. Again, nestling that down and using that warm mill foam tape just for that little bit of lift. So you're just getting points of difference in the background there. That house is gonna nestle beautifully just behind the wall there. And we can go ahead and stick that using a little bit of book binding glue. I'm gonna squidge a little bit out onto my mat. If you'd like to squidge. Just a tiny amount and then use one of the Craftmaster glue applicators just to get into the right background of that house as well. Dabbing that along just the bottom of the die cut, leaving the rest quite open. We can nestle that house down into the scene, lining it up with where the house is on the background of the design too. So it sits within the wall, but it also covers up that little house in the background. We've also got a tree that would be quite fun to layer to give you even more fullness. You don't have to layer it over the tree that's in the background. If we could bring it forward a little bit, that gives you a point of difference too. So let's go ahead and grab some foam for that tree and nestle that down into the design. That gives us our background, it's a nice full background and also breaking up the edge of the card with a little bit of detailing is gonna go working with the theme that we're gonna go in the front of the design of the piece too. Speaking of the front, let's go ahead and add that second pathway, dropping that down so it meets the bottom of the acetate there. I'm just gonna peel that slightly and move it along ever so slightly just so you've got everything covered like so and that's gonna give us a little world. I'm not too fussed that the acetate comes above the details there. Some of this is gonna be covered with our little characters and things as well. But at the moment, we've got a nice freestanding card with already a lot of depth and dimension built in. Now's the fun part. Now we can start telling the story and adding in our little characters as well. So, I mean, we have got gorgeous characters in this. I love, love, love this little cow. He's just got a feature because he is just stunning. Stunning. And I love the fact he's just kind of saying hello. He's just popped his head over the wall, out of the foreground there, and he's just saying hello. So we're going to use him, but we're going to decoupage him up so he gets a little bit more prominence on the front of the card there. So I think he needs to feature. We've, of course, 
got the wonderful alpacas. I mean, these are so cute, aren't they? Are they alpacas or are these ones llamas? I'm never sure of the difference. Maybe someone can lie to me. So maybe that's taking a little stroll onto the card front there as well. So maybe we'll keep them out. Maybe you've got someone in your family like I have that <laughs> loves their tractors. And do you know what? This could be a brilliant card right in its own. Look at that lovely great big tractor. Really pulls the perspective into sharp focus if we introduce it at that size. Or because it's nested, we can absolutely choose to have a smaller tractor. Perhaps just chugging along down the lane as part of the design there back into the background or indeed further into the background. Oh, now that could be fun, couldn't it? Have a tractor right in the background. That might have to stay there. Um, my little boy loves tractors, so I'm sure that's going to be a firm favourite with him. We've also got, these are great. We've got a turkey. Ideal, if you think to things like Thanksgiving coming up, could be utilised in that sense. And a few cockerels and a few hens too. So again, look how they decoupage up. All that detailing, just snipping into the layers and layering them like so, it's just gorgeous. So those are our characters, but we want to build this kind of soften this whole world. We sort of hinted at it by using the tree coming over the edge. We have a whole host of florals with this design as well. These build up, of course, beautifully with the colors, with all the designs, with the detailing to give you that sense of perspective, you know, play around with a perspective, have perhaps the petunias at the foreground. Of course, it is Buttercup Farms. Buttercups had to feature. This gives you a lovely long line quality to your designs as well. See little buttercups kind of coming up the one side there, maybe layered a couple of times. Could look rather fab. And we do have a few wildflowers too. So I'm thinking tractor in the background already decoupaged up which looks a lot of fun a few florals in the foreground may be layered with a few florals behind as well then we'll go in with one of our characters of course we're just playing around with perspective so these don't have to be incredibly true to form the flowers are there just to add in a little bit of texture so let's go ahead and start sticking our characters in place there we've got a little tractor i think he has to have you know a prominent place because let's face it, this wouldn't be Buttercup Farm, would it, without a wonderful tractor in place, tootling down the drive, just like so. I love how it becomes part of that background with the different sizes and the perspective as well. To the foreground, let's have a play with these flowers. We've got the wildflowers as well that I just wanted to get out because they give you a lovely texture. You've got the clovers there, um, some other sort of coloured buttercups and things like that. Beautiful for giving a little bit of detailing. And look how you can then extend the flowers using that wildflower in the foreground. It just nestles everything together and makes it feel, you know, so much more sumptuous and so much more wonderful for Buttercup Farm. And then we have our little, little cow in the foreground and maybe some hens on the other side just saying hello to him as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my flowers down. Buttercups first. And again, I'm just measuring them sort of to the side of the card and just seeing whereabouts my glue would sit to hold these in place. If you were considering sending this through the post, for example, what I might recommend is cut the flowers a couple of times from plain white cardstock and use that to layer on the back of these flowers to give it a little bit more support. That would be worth considering because then you don't have this sort of delicate areas that could get caught or bent in the post. We're going to go in with our wildflowers. Everything's getting caught to my sleeve. I'll get my sleeve out of the way, I think, for the rest of this demo. Layering the florals over the top. Again, same thing, just looking to positioning and just seeing, okay, well, where would the glue sit? A little bit of glue on the reverse. And just kind of nestling those down so you get that same alignment from the stalks and a little bit of overlap. To the buttercups. Do you know what the buttercups might look really fun with? Let's decoupage those, those little flowers up. So let's take just the heads of the flowers where they're in full, full bloom and snip them away from the die cut itself like so. I might need to use my tweezers on this bit just because we're getting a little bit finer with the detail we're working with. But just layering and making sure the scissors just follow the artwork down. Of course, all those little bits and bobs, they could go in a drawer for another day or I might end up using them in this design. 
just using the back of the poker tool just to lift that floral. And again, using our pin flare glue gel, let's go ahead and stick these deca decoupage layers onto that die cut there. Just pulls those florals forward a little bit and gives them a little bit more of an impact for the front of the card design. Let's just lift that little buttercup as well, just teasing those little petals into place. And sticking, because we're adding weight to these flower heads, it really would be a great idea just to cut them from white, as I say, and give you that, that extra strong backing to your overall floral. Again, lift those little petals forwards. That's very cute. And it could be that we end up sort of using the little bits we cut away just to ground our little cow into the foreground as well. I'm just gonna go in with the florals to the back and just see whether that could work as well. Maybe a different layer, just to give it a really full feel. But rather than sticking them right to the back, I think I'm gonna come and stick them to the, the dip, if you like, of the um, stepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop a little bit of red liner tape just on the bottom, but on the front of this die cut. Give it a little bit of shaping as well. Twist those leaves, bring those petals forward and those ones back, just to give you a little bit of roundness there. And then we can go ahead and stick that one too. So you're kind of building a bouquet in the corner of your card. Oops, let me pop that back down, burnish that in place. And try again. There we go. Again, it just adds the, the full effect of those flowers to the foreground, but sets them at a different height to the rest. Again, just lifting the card and checking how it's sitting, how it's looking. Yeah, definitely need that cow on there. He needs to be just so cute. Having the flowers behind him really does give him a little frame as well. So it gives you a kind of point of difference between the layers. And it might be that I come in with a few little flor florals to the foreground, but let's go ahead and stick just as is. I'm gonna switch to foam for this, I think, just so he's got a little bit of grounding. And because I'm going in with extra layers on top of him, it just makes it a little bit easier than trying to do it all with, fo uh, with pin flare and squishing those layers when we come to set him in place. So a few little swatches of foam along his legs. And again, just gonna offer him up to the card and see where else we can pop a little bit of foam just to the center there as well. So it's a good idea just to keep offering it up and just seeing how it sits. Before we stick, let's go ahead and create his decoupage layers too. So again, just looking to what would be in the background, what would be in the foreground, his little legs yeah, would be in the background first off. So let's come and snip that one leg away and follow the cut line detail just to release that little element of our cow. And then let's finish with his little face as well. I mean, goodness me, that little fluffy face is just absolutely adorable. It's so welcoming and sweet, isn't it? Let's just snip his little chin and around. And once again, each layer, we can give that a little bit of shaping to pull him forward twist and turn those ears so he looks kind of inquisitive, like he's listening out or something. A little bit of pin flare on the back to build that decoupage. And then that face, oh my goodness, don't you just want to give him a home? Isn't he adorable? Let's just shape his ears using a poke tool. And his little face. And Pop that there. There we go. And then let's just take that foam away just so we can stick him on the card. As I say, you could use um, pin flare glue gel for sticking him on the card as well. I just felt giving you that option makes it a little easier. There he is. Oh my goodness, I'm in love. I just, oh, he's just so cute. So there is your little cow. So we've got our little cow looking inquisitively. We've decorated with the flowers. We've got 
the tractor in the background there as well. Let's just see, I do think we need a few little hens just to balance the colour in the foreground there. And I think we might need to put some flowers behind our hens as well, just a few, but just so they're framed as well, but not as much. We don't want to overwhelm this side of the card. Making sure we don't have anything coming over the bottom of the edge there. But there we go. You could swap that out if you wanted something like a cockerel looking back to the cow, for example. The reason I like the hens is because they're they're post they're kind of posing, they're posed, they are poised and facing our little cow, and our little cow is facing this way. So that's gonna work for me. Little bit of glue again on the back of those florals using that glue applicator, flicking out any excess. Just sticking that on and shaping the chickens. Because the little moo cow there is kind of like the main player of this card, I'm not gonna add decoupage to the hens. The hens are just almost like his little chorus, his little friends. But those are gonna sit beautifully on the other side. And there we have a finished stepper featuring those wonderful dies from Buttercup Farm from Two Red Robins. That's a really, really fun little make. Of course, as I say, you can tell your story your way, introduce the other characters if you like, change things up, perhaps have the tractor as the main feature of your card as well. We'd love to see your creations. Please don't forget to share them with us in our Facebook group, highlightcrafts.com. And until next time, see you later. If you would like to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications on all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.